We all need somewhere to ride our bikes, right? There are more and more places to ride nowadays, from private bike parks to public forests, but what most have in common is they're built by human hands. People are often really keen to build new trails and explore new areas, but first it's worth asking yourself, is it worth repairing and revamping the trails that you already have? It should go without saying, but you may need permission to dig on the trails. Don't just start digging in places where you're not sure who owns the land, because that could land you in some legal hot water, but also lead to some land access issues with mountain bikers. I ride here, which is Eastridge in Shropshire, and there's a voluntary organisation called the Eastridge Trail Partnership, so that we're actually working on the trails and not just digging all over the place. Uh, so ask around, ask local riders, ask a local bike shop and see if you can get involved so that we're working together to build good trails. Be careful not to start showing up and working on trails that you're not really supposed to be working on. It can be a big nuisance to experienced riders when someone shows up and starts tweaking a trail when they don't really know what they're doing. A good example of that is this really hard section. It's kind of rooty, rocky, off-camber section that is a challenge to ride fast and someone's shown up and built a berm on the outside to make it much easier. In an ideal world, we would have trails to suit all types of ability. So don't presume that everyone likes the same thing. So the tools you'll need to build or maintain trails is a shovel, great for building jumps and moving a lot of soil around. A mattock, really handy for digging big obstacles out of the way. Quite a wide one, it's good for just grabbing stuff. So very useful tool and then some shears or maybe a saw, something like that to clear the bushes and clear the branches out of the way. Sometimes a really easy way of just revamping the trail is to go back to the line it originally was. It's a bit of a modern occurrence this, but trails seem to be straightening out. I guess some of that is down to Strava where people are trying to chase the fastest times, but who wants to ride a trail with no turns? So in this case here, you can see this is where everyone rides now. But up here is the original turn, really nice turn. So let's encourage more people to ride the old trail. You might find you might need to dig a bit of a berm or something just to make it flow a bit better, or just try and block this line off. Okay, you don't want to be laying big trees across the tracks, so that's going to catch people out, but just try and encourage people to use the proper trail if you can. So I'm just going to clear some of the loose brash so that people can turn up easier into the old line. So get rid of that. And also, I'm just going to chop these bushes down a little bit so that people can see it a bit easier. Clear that out of the way. I'm also going to lay a branch down just across the, the straight part of the trail so people are going to see that and be encouraged to ride that corner. You can see where this part of the trail has been benched out a little bit. By that we mean sort of cut into the camber so you can keep some grip and keep your speed across here. The problem with that is when it rains, the water can sit in the bottom and that's going to leave you a puddle and obviously it's going to be muddy and that's going to dig out further and further. So a good little bit of maintenance for these is, as you can see, someone's done it already. They've dug a little drainage ditch, but actually it's got full of bits of cones and sticks and mud. So that's not going to drain very well. So I'll just clear that out. If that wasn't there, just dig yourself a small drainage channel so the water rolls out of there. Obviously not too big, so you've still got that almost part of a berm to ride across, but just so the water can drain out of there and keep this part of the trail working really nicely. Something that's common on fast, hard packed downhill sections are braking bumps. This is where somebody brakes hard and digs out a little bit of a hole and they just get worse and worse when more riders go over them. Personally, I don't mind riding braking bumps. Like this one's okay, you just smash through it. But if you get lots and lots of them, you might want to think about smoothing the trail out a little bit. Chip away at the top of this braking bump because it's not quite so severe. It's really hard packed. It's just been smashed into by so many wheels. So I'm not going to try and fill the bottom of these dips because I think that stuff's just going to pull back out when people ride it. So I'm just going to chip away at the top of that braking bump and then push the soft stuff off the side of the trail and that should do the trick. If you're building a new trail, the place to start is by looking for the flow of a trail. I look for gradient and obstacles and try and make the trail flow as best as possible. Even on the climbs, you don't really want a stop-starty climb. If possible, make the corners really work together 
and start clearing the trail. Here we're in the woods, so actually I try and plan my corner from tree to tree and then clear the space so it's rideable. A mattock is a really great tool for chopping at stuff, but also just pulling this top layer of soft, mossy stuff off the top. Sometimes what you can do is literally just clear the trail using your shears and saw and then your mattock to pull the top off and then ride it in. It's a really good way of checking that that trail is going to flow. And if there's a group of you, just riding it repeatedly will make that trail work, hopefully, and pack it in. So once you've cleared the trail, just keep packing it in, either by riding it or by foot. But just remember to keep an eye on where you want to go down the trail and maybe use the trees as a pinpoint so you can look, okay, I want to be above that tree or want to be going around that tree, whatever. Just trying to use the terrain as best as possible. Maybe you haven't got a lot of descent and you're trying to wind the trail up and down, or maybe you just want to bomb straight down. Up to you guys, that's the fun part. When building jumps, plan the run in and the run out so that it works and it's nice and safe. And try and use hard packed material, either wet dirt or just hard packed clay is going to work really well. If you use logs and then throw dirt on those, they're probably going to sink a little bit and they can take a couple of days to settle down properly unless you're using really hard dirt and then pack it down by foot and then that jump should be rideable straight away. So I found a nice little patch of soft dirt and I'm just going to revamp this jump that's already here by chucking a bit more dirt on top, shaping it and packing it down. With a little bit of experience of building jumps, you'll be able to try and judge properly the angle of the takeoff you need to clear that distance with the speed that you've got. If you build the jumps too steep, they can be really kicky and give you that feel of getting bucked front wheel down. Also, if the jump's soft and you hit it, it can also do that. So try and get that angle nice and mellow to start with and pack down the face of that jump as hard as you can. So there you go. There's a few tips on maintaining and building trails. Um, it definitely works really well for us here in my local woods. We've got a Facebook group. Once a month we go out and we just revamp the existing trails. So there's not, not always a need to build new trails. So now you've got your new trails and some jumps, click up here for how to jump so you can learn how to do it properly. And you can click down here for my video on how to bunny hop. Everybody should be able to bunny hop, it's a key skill. Or click on me to subscribe to the channel, GMBN.